to NURFM. Professor of Education, John Fischetti, in fact, he does join us at the moment talking about all the, the things that are happening in the, the world of education. Uh, John, of course, at this stage, uh, still a bit of a focus on, you know, if schools are going to close, should they stay open, should they be closed, uh, and what that might look like uh, if all students and teachers are at home. So what's the latest on this front, John? Well, Mark, good morning, and good morning to all our listeners. I know it's a really stressful time, and there's a lot of uncertainty, but we are going to get through this, mm. and we'll be okay. We just have to know that. Uh, m- my guess is we're in a very short window between where the government and the local schools will have made decisions where a lot of the learning will now take place at home. It's, it's not if but when, whether that's this week, next week, week after, we're heading that way. The level of growth of the virus will just lead that to that decision. And what I'd love to do is just share for a couple minutes options parents have for what that might look like for them. Yeah, because generally speaking, uh, unless you're already in a homeschooling environment, the kids go to school, they learn, they come home, do a bit of homework and sit, set, repeat. But most of those steps are removed now. So yep. the, the kids are at home. Uh, if, when the announcement happens, what happens then? Well, behind the scenes, schools are gearing up, or they already have, because around the world, this has already taken place in many other countries, for a new kind of normal. And that normal will extend indefinitely. It's several weeks, a couple months, maybe longer. So we have to just prepare our kids that we have a new kind of normal. This is a really sort of exciting time to rethink what we do every day and reprioritize. Some schools will prepare lessons, and they'll want to broadcast the school day live. So if you typically do your English lesson at 9 and your science lesson at 10, you'll be logged in to systems which you already are familiar with because schools are already doing lots of their work online in terms of submitting of assessments and or communication. They'll just activate some other parts of those systems and they'll ask young people to be on like during the school day. Other schools will post things in what's called the learning management systems. There's things like Canvas and Blackboard and other tools with Google and other kinds of uh, apps where your school already has those and they're just gonna now use them as the full-time base to post lessons. Students be asked to either download those or open those up using their devices and complete those assignments and mail them in. One thing I would recommend that parents do is have really honest conversations that we're going to be fine. It's okay. This is just a different approach. And we're going to learn from this. But to create the same sense of normal, like getting up at the same time, if you have a bath or a shower in the morning or the one at night, try to have breakfast at the same time. Don't create this Christmas holiday-like thing where we we all just have our jammies on and sit on the couch and don't do much. That sounds Uh, great, doesn't it? (laughs) But this is not a holiday. This is just a different way to do school. It's going to be interesting, though, a couple of fly-in-the-ointment situations. I guess imagine a, a parents that may both work or and have to would normally yeah. be out of the house, so someone's going to have to be at home. Um, the other thing, too, is if you're in an area that doesn't necessarily have the greatest internet connection, um, there might be a few challenges to overcome there. Those are going to be challenges, and they already are. You already know who you are. You might reach out to the school for any support. You, depending on any restrictions we have in our own travel, grandma may have a support in her house Mm. uh, where she's in a different NBN zone or whatever. So we're going to have to work together uh, following all the policies and rules of government, whether we can merge a couple families together. It just depends on whether we exceed the uh, government regulations and estimates of how many people should be together. We also can create in our home the opportunity to have uh, a little study space. We may have to clean up a little clutter in one part of our apartment or our house. That's always a good idea anyway. (laughs) And we might need to construct what might be the office for our kids. Uh, It might be that you have a desk that has a lot of junk on one side and your stuff on the other. Create that for them so that they can go to school even if it's onto their laptop. Uh, And that becomes the place that they punch in like they do when they put on their uniform. They Mm. go to school they're going to go to school anyway. Because I think the normalcy that we have to create from this will create a sense of confidence in kids that, oh, this is different, but it's going to be fine. Any confidence that we have, kids will mirror. They'll model that. And if we're feeling, oh, we'll just do this for a few weeks. We know we're going to be back. This too shall pass. It might be a while. We don't know, but we'll be fine. That has to be repeated over and over again because we're bombarded with this stuff way too much. The other thing too is this might be a great opportunity for the this entire system to get a, a real reality check and say, are our schools, are we, uh, in terms of our online environment, are we really ready? Totally. If not, we'll all be able to take a look at the other end and go, actually, we need to do A, B, and C. I and think you're right. This up. is a good test of uh, the, the emergency warning systems yeah. to see if we're ready for this. One thing to remember, kids need about an hour of exercise a day. And in any of the countries that have already moved to sort of locked on status, whether that's in China or whether that's in uh, Italy or other places in the world, People are still, where possible, getting out to exercise. They're actually encouraging it 
Uh, and so it means you're going in just with the people you live with and you're staying in the social distance from everybody. But building in that component of walking, uh, exercising, jumping, running is going to be crucial because the mental health relief, not just the physical health mm -hmm. relief from being cooped up all day will be crucial. Plus, the fresh air is going to be good for us all to kind of breathe, which is an important thing to do at this time. All right, John, we'll, uh, we'll wait and wonder on uh, any announcements that you believe are, are, are pretty much inevitable and see how uh, schools and parents and and uh, and kids uh, look forward to the what they can do in the next and, couple of months. And as you were talking about earlier, reading some books together as a family, good idea. it's a good thing. So let's make the best of this. We This too will pass, but let's make sure our learning stays a focus and our kids will follow along. It'll be okay. Our Professor of Education, he's from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, joining us on 2NURFM 103.7.